May I have your attention, please? Worship will be starting in one minute. Please take this opportunity to prepare your hearts for worship and to be seated. And don't forget to put your cell phones on silent. I just want to know if we're in the right place. We in the right place? Y'all waiting on me, eh? Y'all waiting on me? I waiting on you. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together. All right. All right, let's go. Come on, put your hands together. Yes. Yeah. Come on, give me a loudest clap. Yeah. I want to sing a little louder than before. I want to jump higher than before. I want to shout louder than before. Say freedom. Anybody free this morning? Freedom. I wanna sing a little louder than before. Let's spin. I wanna spin wilder than before. Woo! I wanna scream louder than before. Somebody sing it, say. Freedom. We're liberated through the blood. We're liberated through the cross. You're liberated through his name. Say Jesus' name. Oh, yes, I'm free. Oh, yes, I'm free. Oh, I want to lift my hands higher than before. Come on, all across the sanctuary. Yes, I got to love you more than before. Woo! I want to worship deeper than before. Let's go. I gotta shout louder than before. Open up your mouth. Let's go and say, I'm free. I'm free. Come on, maybe you need to declare it to yourself that you're free. Touch yourself and say, I'm free. Maybe you may be in pain today. You may have some hurt. Declare, I'm free. Declare that you're free. Declare that you're free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. 
Anybody need to be free? Maybe you may be experiencing some poverty, some pain in your body, some hurt, whatever it is. I dare you to touch yourself and declare that you are free. Come on, anybody in this house, let's go. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. a little bit free not too free anybody free hallelujah good morning good morning good morning all you lovely people out there so good to see all of you today welcome welcome to relevant kingdom center right here on the island of great exuma in the commonwealth of the bahamas it's so good to have you there all of you guys who are watching online so good to have you with us we're gonna go right into our declaration for this morning. Declare with me. Father, we thank you for the authority to decree a thing and it will be established for us. We declare that Relevant Kingdom Center is a sold out, sanctified, blood bought, spirit filled and soul winning church. We are disciples anointed to make disciples and advance the kingdom of God. RKC is filled and overflowing in every service. God receives true worship. Jesus is exalted and the Holy Spirit is in control. Every member is maturing in their walk from strength to strength, from faith to faith, and from glory to glory. We will affect and impact commerce, arts, media, government, social services, and most other spheres outside the influence of the organized church. be strengthened. Bring the sinner, they will be saved. Bring the brokenhearted, they will be healed. Bring the prisoner, they will be free. Bring the rich, they will increase in good works. Bring the lame, bring the sick, bring the backslidden, bring the crippled, bring the afflicted, and they shall be healed in Jesus' name. If you believe it, put your hands together and give our God a praise for the awesome work and the call he has given to Relevant Kingdom Center. Father, we thank you for another time to come in your holy presence. We thank you for saturating this place. We pray, Heavenly Father, as we go into worship today, that everything that will be said and, to, and that will be done will be to your honor and to your glory. We pray a special anointing upon our worship team today. Father God, we usher us into your presence. Father, we thank you right now even for our first touch team and every person that will play a part in this worship experience today. We pray for the man of God who will bring the word today. We will go forward today with power, clarity, and bring life change to your people today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, come on, people of God, just put your hands together wherever you're at. 
That's how y'all is clap for God. Come on, we can do better than that. If you don't know how to do nothing else, at least you should know how to clap. That's the first thing we learned from two years old, right? Come on, put your hands together just a little bit louder. Just a little bit louder. Come on, just a little bit louder. Just a little bit. Not for me. But if you, when you think about the goodness of God, come on, just, I dare you to clap. Every time you think about his goodness. Every time you think about his faithfulness. Every time you think about the, the way that he brought you out. Every time you th can think about all the things that you did, that God still forgive us and still blessed us. Come on, man. Listen, we only here because of grace, you know. Listen, we only here because of grace. Only because of grace. And so this next song that we're about to sing, this next one is all about you just being, I, I believe as we sing, it says all around, all around, everywhere I look, your love is all around. Very simple. Ah, uh, come on, put your hands together. I want you to think about all the things that you can think about. You can look all over your life and think about the goodness and just begin to bless the name of the Lord. Hey. All around, all around, everywhere I look, your love is all around. All around, all around, everywhere I look, your love is all around. Help me sing. All around, let's go. All around, yes. Everywhere I look, your love is all around. All around, all around, yeah. All around, everywhere I look, your love is all around. Sing it like you know what you're saying. All around, all around, hey. Everywhere I look, your love is all around. Listen, let the nation sing, let the people shout. Come on, open up your mouths. Woo! Come on, let your kingdom come for your spirit out. That is my favorite part. It says manifest, manifest, let's go. Manifest your love. Oh. Say all around, listen. All around. When I go in my car, all around. when I go to work, everywhere I look, your love is all around. All around, all around, all around, all around, all around. Jesus. All around. All around. All around. Everywhere I look, your love is all around. All around. Woo. Come on, put your hands together. Woo. Let the nation sing. Let the people shout. Oh, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Pour your spirit out. Ah, touch yourself and say, Manifest God. Manifest Jesus. Manifest your love, God. Oh, manifest your yeah. love. next song requires you to just forget about everybody else that's in this room and maybe you may not know how to do that so I just ask you to just close your eyes and just focus for a minute we don't want to just be religious but God we just want to be personal God we want to seek you we need to touch you we need to hear from you so I don't know if you came just for a show or if you really just need the presence of God anybody need the presence of God this morning so please just zero in Lord if I find favor in your sight Hear my heart's cry I'm 
desperately waiting to be where you are across the hardest desert I'll travel near or far for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king Lord if I Desperately waiting, desperately waiting just to be where you are, where you are. across the hardest desert, I'll travel near or far, for your glory, I will do anything, Lord, just to be where you are. to see you, you to behold you as you as my king for your glory. glory I will do anything, will do anything just to see be where you are can you help me sing that wanna be where you are gotta be gotta be where you are god we need to be where you are we need to be where you are i wanna be where you are you attention to the screens as our sermon bumper comes on. Amen. The great comeback. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for my comeback. Okay, that neighbor ain't ready for no comeback. Amen. I want you to say it aloud and proud. Say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for a comeback. If you were ready for a comeback, come on, give God a praise in the building. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Well, today we're getting ready to go into the word. And here's what I want you to do. Because it is our custom at Relevant Kingdom Center to honor the word of God. We believe it is God breathed, it is inspired. It is our basic instruction before leaving earth. I want you to stand with me. Everybody stand with me. And we're going to go to the book of Genesis chapter 47 verses 9. Genesis chapter 47 verses 9. It's going to come on the screen for those of you that don't have a Bible. And the Bible reads, Jacob answered Pharaoh, the years of my sojourning are 130, a short and hard life. Everybody say hard life. And not nearly as long as my ancestors were given. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and left. He said a short and hard life. Here's what I want to do today. I want to tag a topic to this first sermon in this series. The rose that grew out of concrete. The rose that grew out of concrete. And if I have a subtopic, it would be it's a hard knock life. <laughs> yeah, y'all remember Annie. It's a hard knock life. Instead of kisses, we get kicked. Instead of treated, we get tricked. It's a hard knock life. Y'all ain't had no hard knock life. Come on. Hallelujah. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about this and encourage you from this subject, the rose that grew out of concrete. Father, I pray that as I pray, prepare to preach, that I decrease, that you increase. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Let there be less of me and more of you. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The rose that grew out of concrete. You know, one of the things that I know about Relevant Kingdom Center is that all of us ain't always been saved. Come on. I'm a 90, well, I'm an 80s baby. Any 80s babies in the house? Okay, three of us. <laughs> any, any, any 90s babies in the house? All the 90s babies. Let me see y'all wave y'all hand. Okay, uh, some of y'all are 70s babies. <laughs> okay, one. We got one old guy in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but you know, one of the things growing up in the 80s, and I had a lot of uncles, and my uncles were DJs, and so I grew up in the house listening to a lot of secular hip-hop music, and it's good to see some of my uncles in the house. Amen. Come on, y'all, let's give them a round of applause. And I know they didn't want to be recognized, but it's good to have them in the house. They surprised me this weekend. But I grew up, I grew up, listening to secular music and, and music on the whole because I grew up in a house that was full of music, you know, DJs. And one of the things that I love is I love the fact that, you know, when we look at some of the music of the 80s, it wasn't as nearly as bad as some of the move, music that we have now in this generation. And so when we think about this subtopic, some of you right off the top, you knew that I was talking from the hip-hop icon Tupac Shakur that metaphorically put this masterpiece of a poem together that's called The Rose That Grew Out of Concrete. You see, one day he was walking and he, re he recognized that there was a rose blooming out of something that it shouldn't. He was able to recognize that the conditions that this rose had grown up in were not conducive to its growth and the circumstances were not favorable for this rose or for its future. Here's that poem for some of you that don't know it. He said, did you hear about the rose that grew from the crack in the concrete? Proving nature's law is wrong. It learned to walk having no feet. Funny it seems, but by keeping its dreams, it learned to breathe fresh air. Long live the rose that grew from concrete when no one else ever cared. Now that's a masterful metaphorical piece that he put together. And I can tell you that this resonated with me as I started to talk and think about what could we share in the first week of this series of a comeback. And when I think about the rose, I think about the rose that grew out of concrete that, that had a great com comeback because that rose should have never grown out of the conditions that, were, that it was in. See, some of y'all missing y'all shout because what if I tell you that you represent that rose? And what if I tell you that your conditions, as some of you be real and testify, 
in here, you could say that your conditions were not always good. Come on now, somebody. How much of you can say that the conditions and, and the situations that you found yourself in had not always been the best situations? You may look good now, but tell somebody it ain't always been good, baby. Come on. I had to do some things that, that, that were hard and difficult, but yet God still blessed me to do it. You see, the concrete represents the conditions that were hard. And I don't know about you, but I believe that there are some of you that have had hard conditions. I was conversing the other day with a sister from Exoma who was an entrepreneur. And she was telling me, she said, Pastor Dury, she said, I can tell you, man, being in Exoma, and we've always said it, she said, it's a hard place. She said, Exuma is a hard place. She said, I don't even know how it is that I've been able to make it this far because Exuma is such a hard place. You see this entrepreneur, she is building something currently and at the end of the day, she, she, she was running into some hard, unexpected situations because there was somebody that was taking much this advantage of her biology being a woman and she's saying, Pastor Dury, being a woman don't make it easy especially being a single woman because you can find you can't find the right help inside Exuma in order for you to grow in order for you to progress because the people that you find to help lack integrity she said I was sending all of my building material and the person was using the building material for something else and she said Pastor Dury it was difficult because because it's hard it's it's hard in Exuma and then she said not only that she said because of the lack of integrity of this individual that I hired that I thought I could trust she said not only did I have to, to to deal with that but she said I had to pause the work and watch what happened people was riding past and people were saying look at her she was able to start something that she couldn't even finish come on and how many of you know that people looking for you to fail people people looking for you to not be able to continue to do what God wants you to do and people are are, are Banking on the fact that you don't accomplish your dreams and your goals. How much of y'all could, could, could agree with that? That people are banking on the fact. And so at the end of the day, she said, Pastor Dury, this place is so hard. And at the end of the day, here's what, what God nudged me in this conversation and said to me. He said, Dury, he said, even though Exoma is a hard place, it doesn't mean that it's not hopeful because you could be in a hard situation, but when you got me, there's still hope. Anybody knows that that's the truth, that, that no matter how difficult it is, you could still dream. Come on, I came to encourage somebody to let you know that your difficult dilemmas don't stop God's promises from being performed in your life. Is there anybody up in here that as you look back over your life, you could say, man, I had some difficult days, but yet I still have some promises that God promised over my life and God spoke over my life. Okay, only about three of us. But I can tell you that no matter how difficult it is, no matter how hard it is, you can still hold on to your hope. And while you may get disappointments, you can still enter into God's divine appointments in your life. I need five of you to just put your hands together if you believe that right there. So hence, after that, that conversation, uh, I, decided that, I decided that we would start this homiletical point of view with this, this, this series and, and start from this story of Joseph. And so in our text, and Jacob, and so in our text, we are brought into the middle of a narrative that starts off messy. You see, Jacob had two wives, Leah and Rachel, and both had animosity towards one another. <laughs> You don't say. <laughs> and so not only that, Rachel started to get jealous of Leah because Leah, God was blessing her to have kids. And so Rachel started to put the pressure on your boy, Jacob. <laughs> and after she put pressure on Jacob and Jacob said, Rachel, at the end of the day, only God could bless you with fruit in your womb. And I can't do nothing about it if you ain't having babies. And so they was having this domestic argument. And so Rachel had something up her sleeve. And and Rachel say, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you go ahead and sleep with my servant, B Bila. And so now, here it is. Jacob had entered a serious domestic dilemma because he had three women, three baby mamas, under the same roof. All of the fellas say, Lord Almighty. He had three baby mothers under the same roof. And hence, Jacob had now come to a place where it was hard. His situation was difficult. His, condusi his conditions were not conducive to what God wanted to do in his household. And so finally, Rachel, after a while, was able to give birth to the baby Joseph. 
And once she gave birth to Joseph, Jacob started to favor Joseph. Because you see, Jacob, he had loved Rachel. He had loved Rachel more than he loved Leah. And so automatically when Leah gave birth to his seed, Jacob, as, as a result, favored Joseph. And when Jacob favored Joseph, it happens that his brothers had animosity now between him and, and them. And so one day Joseph had a dream. Everybody say, I got a dream. And that's the wrongest thing Joseph could have done was have a dream because here's the thing. Even family members sometimes don't support your dreams. Even the people that you thought would support your dreams, they'd be the very ones to try to pull your dreams down. It don't be the haters on the outside that try to distract you from your dreams. It be the same ones on the inside that you trust, that you love, that will try to distract you, that will try to disappoint you, and that will try to pull down your dreams. And so at the end of the day, Joseph, he had a dream, but the odds were stacked against him and the people that supported him. And so Joseph, he was like a flower that had no legs to walk. And what does that mean metaphorically? I believe that Tupac was trying to say that this flower, even though he didn't have support, at the end of the day, he was still able to do what it is that God planted him on the planet to do. And I'm here to tell somebody prophetically that even if you don't have no support in this season, I dare you to still believe God. I dare you to still trust God. Because even without support, God's about to flip the script. And he's about to cause you to come up when people was trying to hold you back. I need about five of y'all to give God a prayer right there because God is about to cause you to move when people don't even support you it doesn't matter who's on my left or who's on my right as long as God is with me because greater is he watch this that is in me than he that is in the world hallelujah and I don't care who turns their back against me as long as God is for me somebody ought to give God a praise because you know that he is for you and baby when God is for you there ain't nothing people could do to stop you and so Joseph's brothers, out of their jealousy, y'all know the story because if you ever matriculated through Sunday school, you know the story well. But, but these were the people that couldn't stand to see his favor. How many of you know that there's some people that don't know, they can't stand to see the favor on your life? Because favor at the end of the day ain't fair. And can I just tell you that, that you can't help the favor. Look at somebody say, I can't help it. Okay, you turn to the wrong person. Amen. Turn to somebody else and say, neighbor, I can't help it. I can't help the favor that's on my life because what favor I got on my life, only God himself could do it. Come on now, somebody, because the doors that he's opening, he's opening doors that no one could close. I don't care how much they hate on me. I don't care what they do to me. As long as I got the favor of God on my life, there is nothing that could stop me from blooming, even if I feel like I'm in concrete. And so Joseph's brothers, they decided that they would, they would cause this dreamer to stop dreaming. And one day they threw him in the pit because they was jealous over the stuff their father was giving him. And so they decided that they would put Joseph in concrete. But what they didn't realize is that God, he always starts off something great with a seed. <laughs> and so when they put Joseph in the pit, this pit was a hole in the ground. And see, when you got a seed, in order for a seed to bloom, in order for a seed to blossom, you got to first put that seed in a hole in the ground. And so Joseph didn't realize it, but Joseph was a seed in the ground, a seed in the ground that was hard, a seed in the ground that was concrete, but yet God was still got, got a plan for Joseph. Yet God still had a plan for Joseph. And so then one day they were saying, we ought to kill this dreamer. But yet, watch this, their brother Judah, who was the oldest, said, no, you can't kill this brother yet. They said, because if we kill this brother, our father is not going to forgive us for this. And y'all, here's my shout on that. Because when the enemy thinks that he's going to kill you, watch this, Judah steps in. Y'all know what Judah means? Judah means praise. And 
sometimes the enemy tries to stop your prayers because he knows your, it's your prayers that's going to get you out of some stuff. That's why sometimes when you come in this atmosphere, it's so heavy during praise and worship because the enemy is trying to muzzle your mouth. He's trying to keep you bound. And so sometimes you got to say, you know what, devil, no matter what, I'm going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I'm not going to enter his courts with praise because it's your praise that sets you free. Can I get about five people to just help break this atmosphere even now with some pray I dare somebody to just stand to your feet real quick and lift your hand up and say God I praise you because my praise that gets me out give your neighbor a high five say neighbor let your praise get you out and so 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 Joseph was placed in some concrete conditions, something that he should have never recovered from, something that should have kept him bound and broken because from the pit he went to being enslaved in Potiphar's house. From Potiphar's house, he went to an unjust 14-year prison sentence. From that prison sentence for 14 years of these concrete conditions, but because of the favor of God, every say one say, because of the favor. Because of the favor of God, his heavenly father rose him like a rose out of concrete. So now we have some context about this whole dilemma that we're in. We can pick up with our main narrative and Joseph has now revealed at some point to his brothers later on through the years who he was because you see there was a famine in the land that, was, that had cost uh, Joseph's brothers to have to come down to Egypt to seek some kind of redemption. Can I just tell you something? The same people that threw you away, the same people that discounted you, the same people that were negative and tried to break you down is the same people that God will somehow cause to have to come watch this right to you. Hallelujah. And so they don't know that they're trying to destroy the dream of something that God's going to use in the future to even bless them with. That's why you got to be careful how you handle people. Turn to your neighbor and say, be careful how you handle me. You got to be careful how you handle people because the same people that you try to discourage and discount are the same people that you're going to have to go back to one day. And so now it happens that Joseph's brothers were there and I'm almost done. His brothers were there and they thought they had killed the dreamer, but the dream was still alive. The, the rose did not be, was not hindered by the concrete and the dream was still alive. And what happened is regardless of his hand conditions and his circumstances, watch Genesis 45 verse 9. It's going to come on the screen. Genesis 45 verse 9, his brothers had now re-encountered Joseph because they had to come to him for help. And watch what Joseph did when he revealed himself to his brothers. He said this to them, hurry and go to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph. Watch this, God has made me Lord of what? Oil. Some of Egypt. Oil. God has made me Lord of all of Egypt come down to me do not tarry you shall dwell in the land of Goshen and you shall be near to me and you and your children and your children's children and your flocks and your herds and all that you have watch this there watch what Joseph said I will do what there I will provide for you lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty for there are still five years of famine watch the scripture Verse 12, and behold your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, see that it is my mouth that speaks to you. So you shall tell my father of what? All my glory in Egypt. You could imagine Joseph's brothers at this point. They couldn't believe it because the last time they saw him, they saw him in the pit. And after they sold him to slavery, they thought that that was it for him. But look how God caused a come up, come on, and a comeback for Joseph. Because the same person that was down in this pit is now standing before them and saying, you see all this here? I run it. <laughs> you see all this here? I got to say over it. I could say who come and I could say who goes. I could say who could be blessed and who can't be blessed. I run it. Everybody say, I run it. Hallelujah. And so here it is now. The Bible says that Benjamin, his younger brother, began to weep because watch this. He had witnessed what a rose had looked like that was blossoming out of concrete. So fast forward, Jacob gets this good news and he makes his way to Goshen. And so now we come to Genesis 46 verse 2 to 4. And then God spoke to Israel in the vision 
of the night. Now this is, this is Joseph's father now. We're back to Joseph, Joseph's father Jacob. And so now God speaks to Joseph, Joseph's father Jacob through a vision in the night. And he said, Jacob, Jacob. And Jacob said, here I am. So he said, watch this, I am God. Can I just stop right there and tell somebody, I don't care what you're going through. I need you to always remember that you serve the Lord who is what? God. There ain't no one like him. And let me tell you something. God is all powerful. There ain't nothing God can't do. He is God. I tell people, you can mess with me, but baby, don't mess with God. Because he is the king of kings and the lord of lords. He says, I am God. The God of your father. Watch what he says. Do not fear. He says, go down. Where did he tell him to do? Go down. Go what? Down. He says, go down. Because sometimes, before you can come up and come back, you got to go down. <laughs> Let me say it again. I know this was going to be, uh, uh, this wasn't going to be a shouting message like that because, because see, we like to hear about the come up, but we don't like to hear that sometimes we got to go what? Down. See, because in order for something to be built, sometimes it has to be broken. Down. You see, I mean, and I got this six pack. And can I tell you all the reason why this six pack ain't looking like a six pack, but a keg is because... I can't really take all of the pain of doing crunch ups and all of these different workouts because every time I do it, my eyes be aching for days. And I say, boy, I ain't gonna lie, a six pack will look good. Anybody with me? A six pack will look real good. <laughs> but watch this in order for me to truly get that six pack, the muscles gotta be what? Broken. That's the only way the muscles are going to come and get the definition and define. Can I just tell somebody out of all of the things that's been breaking you down over the last five years, over the last two years, over the last couple months, here's what God is saying to you. God is saying, I'm using it to make you better. I'm using it to make you stronger. I'm using it to make you wiser. Come on now, somebody. And even though it seems like you're going down, before you can really come up, you have to what? And he says, go down to Egypt. Watch this. And he says this. And he said, I will surely what? Is it up on the screen? He said, and I will also surely what? He said, baby, don't worry about going down. Because even though you got to go down, just know because I'm your king and I'm your Lord, you ain't going to stay down. You're going to come up. Come on, everybody give God a praise right there if you know that he's the God of the come up. He says, even though you got to go down, just know that you're going to come up. Jacob is now getting ready to go before Pharaoh. And so watch this. Pharaoh must be was looking at Jacob. And he say, how old are you? Y'all ever see somebody that life tear them up so bad? <laughs> that when you see them, you ain't trying to be rude. But you just trying to ask them, how old you is? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, they look like they're 50. But then they tell you, I only 30. <laughs> and you saying, Lord, you must have got a hard life. <laughs> look at your neighbor say, neighbor, how old are you? <laughs> Some of them look older than they are. Because <laughs> they had a what? A hard life. And then you see some people that they look so good and they look so young. And when you ask them how old they are, they're telling you they're 50, but they look 30. And you're asking them, what in the world you did? Because I need that secret. See, but Pharaoh, he looked at Jacob and he said, how old are you? And so Joseph, Jacob answered Pharaoh. He said, the, the years of my sojourning are 130, a short and what? Hard life. And not nearly as long as my ancestors were given. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and he left. So J Joseph, watch verse 11 now. So now after all of this transpired and I'm done. Here's what J J Joseph did. Joseph assigned, watch this, 
to his dad that had a hard life for 130 years. Joseph assigned them the very best land in Egypt. Let me say it again. After 130 years of struggling, God assigned him the very best land in Egypt. And watch this from the region of Ramses to his father and his brothers and settled them there just as Pharaoh commanded. Can I just tell somebody here as you shout that after all that you've been through, God is about to give you his very best in the next season of your life. And if you believe that, I need you to give God a praise. Hallelujah. Because if you've had a hard life, if you've had a difficult season baby you ought to be rejoicing because you know that trouble don't last always can i just preach this thing for a moment weeping may endure but for a night but is there anybody up in here that know that joy is coming in the morning time come on now somebody that i don't care how dark it may seem i don't care how bad it may look baby god is about to give you his very best he's about to put a coat of favor on you that when people see you they're going to say isn't that such and such that had such a difficult life isn't that such and such that had such a hard time but baby when they see you again look at somebody say when they see me again hallelujah they're going to see me better than i was before come on they're not going to see me broken busted and disgusted they're going to see me better than i was before i need about 10 people that believe god's about to give you his very best to give him a standing ovation because they thought that you were broken down but god's about to build you up they thought it was over for you but god says it's just getting started they thought it was your end but baby it is just your beginning look at somebody say it ain't over for you hallelujah come on encourage them again say baby it ain't over for you hallelujah god is about to do something so significant in your life he's about to not only give you a come up but he's about to give you a comeback because they disqualified you but god qualified you they discredit you but god is putting credit to you come on now somebody they saw you going down but god was just drawing an audience because see people like to see people going down rather than see them coming up and i like how god works but God, because God will make an audience out of you and God will say look at how they're going down but baby you ain't only going to see they're going down you're about to see they're coming up hallelujah and no wonder he says I'm going to prepare a table in the presence of your enemies hallelujah and watch this I will even make your enemies your what go make your enemies your footstool and car you could play something soft so they don't get too nervous and think their macaroni gonna burn hallelujah because i just came to tell them amen in this first week of the comeback series is that god he is not silent even though he's not he's not deaf hallelujah to your cries and even though you may feel like you're in concrete right now god is about to blow you up come on god is about to bring you up and god is about to set you up for your comeback i don't care how hard the conditions are i don't hear, care how hard the circumstances are you're about to come back some of you have had hard conditions and watch this because this is a small island everybody saw your conditions they saw how you stopped they saw how you paused and they said look at them they started something that they weren't able to finish come on now somebody but here's what God's doing God says I'm still gonna cause you to bloom in the middle of hard circumstances I'm still gonna cause you to be built up even though you felt like you were broken down and so if you didn't get nothing from this whole message here's my bottom line you don't have to allow your conditions to define you or confine you. You can come up and you can come back. Let me say it again. You can come up and you can come back. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, you can come back. Come on, encourage them, say, neighbor, you can come back. Hallelujah, everybody standing just for a moment. Hallelujah. Everybody standing just for a moment. I don't know who this message was for, man. But I just feel like God is telling somebody that you've allowed your difficult seasons to define you for too long. But you don't have to be defined and you don't have to be confined by what you were going through. God is saying that this is the moment, this is the season that you could come back. And that what was meant for your evil, he's about to flip the script. And turn it for your good so I want to pray for you father I pray for every person in this place I pray God that they would know 
Father God, that you're still present even in the midst of their pain. Father God, that your promises are not hindered by their problems. Father God, that they don't have to be confined, oh God, by their circumstances. That their dilemmas, Father God, does not stop or dictate your promises over their life. And so, Lord, there are some of them that if they were to be real, are going through the most difficult seasons in their life. But after today, I thank you that their faith is built up. That after they come through what they've been through, they're going to be stronger, they're going to be wiser, and they're going to be better. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, our King. And I need somebody to slap your hands together. Come on and open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth and give God a praise. And I want you to declare this out loud with me. Say, I'm getting ready for a come up and a come back. Can y'all do me a favor? Look at two people and say, neighbor, get ready for a comeback. Come on. Look at two people and say, neighbor, get ready for a comeback. That's only one person, man. Y'all stop being stuck up. Amen. Turn to somebody else and say, neighbor, get ready for a comeback. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on. Slap those hands together one more time. I'm going to invite our service host up to come and just give us some announcements. You could be seated for a couple of more moments and we're going to get out of here in a minute. How much of you were blessed by today's message? How much of you all were blessed by today's message? Amen. I really believe that the next couple of weeks are going to be significant. So I want you all to throw the rope of hope out, man, and get some folks in this place. Because God's going to be doing some breakthrough, miraculous things in Relevant Kingdom Center. Because Relevant Kingdom Center, here's what I want to declare over you all. We better get ready for a comeback. Because God's about to bless this church more than ever before. Everybody say comeback. Hallelujah.